What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Stoof and I just want to start out by saying I'm sorry I haven't been that active recently with uh, connecting with you guys and looking at your channels and replying to comments as quickly. I've been super super busy. Uh, I Some of you guys know that I am planning a very long, like a year long travel trailer trip uh, around the United States and that is scheduled to start in two months, two and a half months, uh, the full trip. So we've been doing a couple mini trips here and there, but we're going to be leaving in December for our massive trip. So I've been planning out all of our travel destinations, all of the logistics with getting there, um, all of our places that we'll be staying, all of the things we're going to see, and then also working on our budget. So that's taking up a lot of my time. And we're planning all that while we are also trying to sell our house. So <laughs> we're also trying to finish a bunch of things and chores to get this house ready to sell. So I have that, I have that, and then I also have my painting career where I have a handful of commissions that I'm working on right now. Uh, so it's just been very, very busy the last few weeks. And unfortunately, that's not going to slow down until December. So I'm going to try to uh, keep giving you guys some time. I'm also going to keep trying to post at least one video a week every Thursday so you guys can still kind of keep up with where I am and what I have been working on each week. All right, so now that that's out of the way, this week we're going to do a tutorial uh, for this golf course landscape painting right here. This is Kiowa Island Golf Course and this is like a nice morning sunrise scene. So we have a very soft muted palette with a nice cool sky and the grasses and the nice little bunker with the um, like the tall grasses right in the foreground. So we're going to go over the colors that I use in this painting and I'll also go over like some brush stroke techniques and stuff like that. Uh, but it's not going to be in real time because in real time this one took about four hours. Uh, so I'm going to speed up some sections where things are very repetitive. All right, thanks for listening to my intro. Now let's get started with the tutorial. To get started on this painting, I use the grid method. And if you are not familiar with the grid method, I will leave a link to that video in my description under this video. But basically I draw a grid on the canvas, I draw the same grid on my reference photograph uh, at the same ratio, and then I just start sketching on the canvas what I'm seeing in my reference photograph. If you guys do recreate this painting, then you can just screenshot my finished painting, add your own grid to it, and then use that as reference for your painting for you to get your uh, concept sketched out. After I'm happy with my initial sketch, then I start to fill in things that are the farthest in the background and make my way to the foreground with just a base layer of paint. I work in layers when I use oil paint, so I get a first base layer of paint down uh, where I don't add any details yet. I just try to get a good base color down for each feature in the painting, and then I let that layer dry, and then I start working on adding detail in sections and more layers. So for the sky, I started out with very muted colors. So we're using cooler colors here. So we're using some permanent rose, some dioxazane purple, a little bit of magenta, Prussian blue, ultramarine blue, maybe a hint of phthalo blue and phthalo green for that section uh, in the center of the sky. And just kind of adding white and maybe a hint of black or a complementary color to kind of mute that vibrancy down a little bit because this is a scene at dawn or just as the sun is starting to come up might still be behind some clouds uh, just over the horizon off to the right side uh, is where our light source is so we don't have really strong contrast in this painting and we don't have really bold vibrant colors in this painting after I got the sky base layer of paint down, I went in with a base layer of paint for the ocean. And I get right in front of the camera here because if I don't do that, then I paint a crooked line. <laughs> so we have our nice straight 
flat horizontal ocean line there. Uh, just using a flat tipped brush for that to get that nice solid straight line. Uh, if you are very meticulous about how flat your horizon line is for the ocean, you could paint the sky, let that layer dry for a week, and then put a piece of tape down and paint your ocean then. Uh, that's another option you could do if you want a perfectly straight line. Then I continue moving forward and I start with a little bit of a darker color than what we're gonna see in the finished result. Uh, and that's just my base color. It tends to be a little darker for grasses and uh, bunkers and dunes and shadows at first uh, because I build up with highlights. So we're using uh, some sap green here, some phthalo green, burnt sienna, burnt umber, yellow ochre, some Indian yellow, um, maybe a hint of magenta in there too to mute the greens down some more. A little bit of black in there, some white, and I just fill in that space where we're gonna have all our tall grasses, then our shorter grass in the foreground, Then our bunkers uh, have white sand in them, but because of this time of day, we're not gonna have pure white because the sun isn't directly above this bunker making it super bright. Uh, we still have that color in the sky that's gonna kind of show up in the bunkers there. Some a little bit cooler, uh, like a pinkish purple blue white. <laughs> not, not a bright warm white, but a cooler color that isn't white <laughs> is going to be our bunker. Now at this point we have the base layer of paint down. So for each feature I get a base layer, I add a little bit of a highlight and a little bit of a shadow in some spots where I need to be able to differentiate features uh, like that fairway. You can see some of the rolling hills there. I did a little bit of a highlight there. Uh, just for my base layer so I can go back with a little bit less stress <laughs> in my next layer so I know where everything is. After my base layer of paint dried fully for about a week, I went back and started to add some detail. So here I did the same thing I did for the base layer of paint where I start with the features in the background and make my way down to the foreground, which usually means I start at the top of the canvas and work down. For the sky, I started to re-blend those same colors I had for my initial base layer of paint uh, just to get a little bit better coverage of paint on the canvas because it was a thinner layer that I used for my base layer. Here I'm using a flat tip brush and I'm just softly making back and forth brush strokes and blending colors into each other, starting to add a little bit more white to the mixture at the bottom part of the sky and a little bit more phthalo blue and ultramarine blue at the top of the sky. Here I just blended some permanent rose, white, and ultramarine blue and I thin that paint down with my citrus solvents. If you guys want to use citrus solvents to thin down your paint I have a link for that in my description under this video uh, but I blended that color together and I just went back and forth right over the bottom part of the sky that I had that was blue uh, to make a softer transition to that pink color which is like right above the horizon line and then I started to add more yellow and permanent rose, maybe a hint of flesh tint uh, to keep warming up that color as I get closer and closer to the horizon line. And it's a very soft transition there. So make sure you're very lightly pressing on the canvas and just moving back and forth softly to get a good smooth transition. Here I'm working on blending a color for that cloud on the left that's gonna carry out farther into the right part of the sky. And I didn't wanna get something too dark. I also didn't want it to be too warm. I wanted it to be like a cooler purple blue. So once I got a nice color there, I just softly put that onto the canvas, going back and forth with my brush strokes, kind of pushing the brush a little bit 
harder into the canvas at the top of the cloud uh, to get that puffy cloud look a little bit at the top there. I use that same soft purple blue for the cloud at the top, just lightly brushing that color onto the canvas, pressing more lightly when I want the cloud to look a little bit more hazy and transparent, and putting more pressure on the canvas when I want a thicker, more opaque section of the cloud. Now I'm starting to add some highlights to the clouds where the sun is starting to light up the sky just a little bit, still very soft colors, not too bold with the vibrancy, uh, and we'll just mix some flesh tint, white, and maybe a hint of yellow ochre or cadmium yellow light there. Um, so it's very, just like a very creamy white, warmish, pinkish color. Uh, and I just put that down with some swift brush strokes. And then once it's there, I very softly gently press on the canvas to let it blend and kind of transition into the colors that are already on the canvas. I continue adding that highlight color in other sections of the sky, very lightly pressing where I want the clouds to look more hazy. Here I'm taking a thicker application of paint and I'm dragging it with my flat tip brush at an angle so I can get a thin line. And I'm going over that again with another layer because I want this to be thicker paint here so we have a more opaque looking highlight on this section of cloud. This one has a little more yellow in it than the clouds above it. And we have this highlight above and below this cloud. We'll start to put some shadows over top of it later, but we start with this highlight. After I have that nice round of highlights added, then I go back again. Uh, starting to boost the contrast just slightly and starting to incorporate a little bit more pinks and yellows into the sky as well. Adding a couple little shadows in that cloud in the middle of the sky. Trying to puff up the cloud on the left in the center, uh, just using an angled brush and holding it so that I can make little swirly patterns to kind of build up that cloud puffy texture. And then our clouds at the top of the canvas aren't puffy, they're a little bit more like cirrus type clouds. Uh, so we have those long, uh, hazy looking clouds. And so I'm building up a little bit of the shadows there After I was happy with the sky, I went back to the ocean and just touched up that horizon line one more time, making it nice and flat, using some phthalo blue, Prussian blue, magenta, maybe a hint of black in there and a hint of white as well. After I touch up that line, I start to add some highlights on the water, so I just include more white maybe a hint of phthalo green mixed with magenta with white and just start to add those little highlights with my flat tip brush. Then I go in with another round of highlights using my liner brush, which can give me those nice thin little waves, uh, the little lines for each little wave that we can see. And I thin my paint down with my citrus solvents when I use my liner brush so I can get those nice, thin, precise lines very lightly pressing on the canvas when I make those marks as well. 
using Thalo Green, Burnt Umber, and Thalo Blue, I built up one of the shadows just a bit more uh, on that hillside there in the background on the right side. And after touching up that shadow, I started to redefine my contact uh, with the viewpoint of the golf course with the water behind it. So that little ridge that we see of land right before the sea. So I just use my flat tip or my angled brush just for that. Uh, trying to get a little bit of the textured look of the grasses in the background there. So our tall grasses in the background are gonna be much smaller and less detailed than the tall grasses in the foreground. So I'm just using that angled brush just to define that border a little bit better. And my colors are starting to blend in a bit with the sea color behind it because this is oil paint and it's still wet. Uh, but I do go back again later and add some highlights after the ocean's a little bit more dry. And we have the shadows on the left and the highlights on the right for each little bundle or bunch of grasses that we see. Uh, and on the hillsides, on the left part of the hillside, everything's going to be in shadow. On the right side of each little hill, everything is in highlight. Uh, and when I say shadow and highlight, keep in mind we're trying to keep these subtle here. We're not trying to make like pure black, dark blue shadows and pure white, yellow highlights. We want to tone things down and have less contrast uh, because of the time of day that we are looking at this scene. In addition to adding those highlights and shadows for the background hillsides, I also put in a little bit more sand uh, because this whole area is just surrounded by dunes and bunkers. So we have lots of sand and I'm just keeping that sand that muted, cool, blue-white color. Once I got that background uh, generally detailed, not to like the highest level of detail, but getting closer with the blades of grass and the shadows and highlights, I was ready to start moving forward. So I created a new color for the green and right now that looks really bright, but that's because I am going to brighten up the fairway uh, leading up to the green afterwards. So it looks super bright right now, but it will look better in a little bit. So this is a blend of some yellow ochre, a hint of Indian yellow, cadmium yellow light, phthalo green, sap green, and maybe a hint of cadmium yellow medium, and definitely some white is in there. Maybe like a hint of burnt sienna too. But Basically, if you get the gist of where I'm going with this, we want yellows and warm browns uh, for that green. Uh, you could tone it down a bit. Um, what I end up doing here is once I get that base uh, highlight, I guess you could say, because I colored most of it with that color, uh, then I go back and I start to add a little bit of shadows where we have some minor slopes on the green. And next, I start blending some colors for the fairway and start uh, brightening that up with some highlights. Again, the right side of the slope is in light and the back side of the slope on the left side is more in shadow. And hopefully now it's kind of coming together for you guys why I start with a darker base layer of paint and then I start to brighten things up by adding more highlights on top of it. Uh, it just helps me to get things to look realistic more quickly. Uh, so by starting dark and then working lighter and lighter, you can achieve that uh, pretty easily. And I've heard that in watercolor, it's kind of the opposite. So <laughs> that's why watercolor is kind of tough for me, but I like painting with oils. So <laughs> if you guys are watercolors artists, then uh, more power to you, because that is uh, really tricky for me. But anyway, back to this painting. Uh, we're using more sap green here, and if you blend sap green with magenta, it will give you 
more of a brownish green. So that gives you more of like a neutral green for this time of day. Uh, on the left side of the slopes, I'm using more phthalo green with burnt umber. That gives me a really cool green for a good shadow color. For these highlights, I'm using some yellow ochre, some like a hint of uh, Indian yellow, maybe a uh, hint of sap green, hint of phthalo green in there too, maybe. Uh, but you want to try to keep it a little warmer on those highlights. So keeping a little bit more yellow mixed in with your greens, especially yellow ochre because it's more of a neutral yellow. And I'm just using my angled brush and just making those back and forth brush strokes, really small little back and forth brush strokes. Uh, and that helps me to get that grassy texture for this level of distance. So you'll see me use a different brush stroke technique when I'm working on the grass right in the foreground. Uh, and that will help us to differentiate the blades of grass in the foreground from these blades of grass that are much farther away from us. So just by making these little back and forth brush strokes and keeping it kind of choppy, you're still getting that textured look of rolling hills for a traditional golf course. And now we're ready to continue moving forward towards the foreground with this dune area here. So we have this bunker that kind of zigzags and the sand kind of fills in uh, the tall grassy section as well on the left side. So we'll get to that next, uh, but we want to layer our grasses here, starting with the grass farthest in the background and pulling those layers forward, making sure you have like a shadow and a highlight for each little cluster of your grasses. I'm not going to go into too much detail on the grasses because I just did a video on this a couple weeks ago for a cheetah painting that was in like a savanna. So I'm going to leave a link for that below if you want some tips for painting blades of grass and how to use the layering method uh, for painting your grass. So at this point, I just kind of start jumping around the canvas and moving farther into the background, starting to add more detail, just because I was starting to get bored with the foreground. <laughs> I could do that, right? <laughs> uh, so we're moving back here using my liner brush, incorporating some green grasses, some burnt sienna grasses, some yellow ochre grasses in there, and then using a mixture of burnt sienna with some phthalo green for more of a shadowy, green grass color on the shadowy side of each little slope. And things are starting to come together nicely in that back right section. Now our grasses are moving closer here. I'm using my liner brush for the far right side. And now you can make larger blades of grass, so like taller and maybe a little thicker than those ones in the background. And you can start to see the blades of grass kind of curving and going off in different directions at this point. Now I'm adjusting that shadow in my bunker and making it a little bit less intense uh, because we don't have like a true bold shadow uh, for where the sun is in this painting. Uh, it kind of is a softer shadow, so it's still cooler there but it's not like, bam, there's a shadow. <laughs> so uh, I was just working on mellowing that out a bit and brightening up that bunker a tad. Uh, I do come back to it again. So as you can see, jumping around again, moving into the back left side of the painting behind the green, taking my tiny liner brush and another trick for using the liner brush when you want really thin blades of grass is to just press more gently on the canvas so that your blades of grass are nice and thin. And if you put more force on the canvas with your liner brush, you're going to get a thicker line for your blade of grass. So here I am just starting to work on building up those layers for the grasses in this dune area that's just behind the foreground. At this point, I'm happy with everything behind the green. 
uh, that I have already painted and I'm not planning to do anything else with that section. I'm also not planning to do any more adjustments to the color on the green. So I'm ready to add my flag pin and the flag that's on the green. Uh, and it's a nice windy day, so it's a nice, perfect rectangle flag. It's not like folded or anything like that. My favorite types of flags to, plant, to paint. <laughs> You don't want to paint your flag when you need to make adjustments to the green or to the section of your painting that's directly behind the flag. You want everything to be finished so you can just paint that flag right over top of it and not have to try to work around it to adjust something behind it. Next, I just touch up a couple minor things that caught my attention, just boost the shadows and the highlights just a bit. And now it's time to start to get some more detail in this tall grassy dune section. So I use my liner brush and swiftly make some little brush strokes with like a curved line going in different directions for my tall grasses. And these tall grasses have seeds at the top of them, so first I put a burnt umber shadow at the top of each of these and then I just add a couple little highlights with the same color I used for the blade of grass. Also adding a couple other little uh, tones in there just so that each blade of grass doesn't look the same. Now I'm starting to add some of the little bit of vegetation that's growing out into the bunker. Just like a nice wild look. Adding some shadows. Just lots and lots of work with the liner brush here. We have these nice little grasses in the lower right there that are catching a nice highlight. Uh, so those have like a more of a yellow for the highlight and then more brown and green for the shadow. We have a couple little hills here, little mounds uh, of dirt with these grasses in them. And to get that look, you may have to make sure you include a highlight and a shadow and put your grass in rows so that it looks like it's going on a curve. Uh, so as you can see, my grasses are kind of coming down at a angle from the right down to the left corner there and that central large little mound uh, and that helps to make it look like it's going down a hill slope. Now I'm just quickly putting in a shadow uh, for the divider between the grass in the foreground and the tall grasses that are going to be right behind it. And then I put another little layer down of uh, sap green with some uh, cadmium yellow medium and some phthalo green in there too, just to warm up that grass in the very front foreground. We want this grass in the foreground to be more saturated uh, because it is closer to us than the grass farther in the background, right? Uh, the fairway area behind the dunes, bunker area. <laughs> and then to speed things up but keep the painting moving along, I did switch to a flat tip brush for a bit uh, just to throw in a couple little highlights and shadows. Now I'm switching back to the liner brush and continuing to add highlights. Most of these grasses have primarily yellow ochre as the main color. Uh, we also have like hints of flesh tint, uh, permanent rose, some dioxazane purple, uh, some ultramarine blue, different colors to warm and cool them down and to kind of counteract the uh, saturation. So if you add ultramarine blue to your grasses, it's going to cool it down. If you add more uh, cadmium red or burnt sienna, then that's going to make things a little bit more saturated and warm. So just think about your uh, cool and warm colors when you're working on your grass and what you're going for when you're adding those colors.
and I just keep building up those layers. As you just saw, I started with those grasses that are farther in the background, and I keep moving forward closer and closer to the viewer, adding a layer of shadow, a layer of highlight, layer of shadow, and my grasses are going in all different directions. I'm using different colors. They're not all the same color, and that's how we keep our grasses from looking flat uh, by using a variety of colors and building up on your shadows and highlights. We have some tall grasses in the uh, boundary between this foreground grass and the dune area. Uh, so I'm starting to add those with a liner brush, still thinning down my paint so I get a nice, good, smooth line for all of my grasses. And we are going to have more contrast here than anywhere else in the painting. So right now, I think the biggest contrast spot in the painting is that uh, on the right side with the bunker where the shadow meets the shadowy grass section that's probably the most contrast spot right now um, but as we're moving closer and closer to your viewer we're going to keep building up that contrast so here i'm not including white in my mixture anymore for my shadows so i'm getting really dark shadows and my highlights are going to be a little bit brighter than things behind them. Uh, that's probably something I could have done better myself with this painting. Uh, so that's something that you could do is just make sure you have much more contrast in the foreground than you do in the background. Even though the main goal in this painting was not to have too much contrast because it is like a dawn time of day, you can still have more contrast in the foreground than you have in the background to make it read as like a three-dimensional view rather than just a flat painting. So just going around painting those grasses. Grasses are very easy to paint. Uh, it's just very repetitive so I'm speeding this part up a bit. Incorporating some burnt siennas in the grass in the foreground too. Adding a layer of shadows, highlights, shadows, highlights to make it look like we have layers and layers of grasses right here up in the foreground, not just one flat row of grass. And I'm going back here and just boosting my shadows a little bit because I thought things were starting to get a little bit too blended in. So I touched that up a bit. And now we've made it to the grass in the foreground where we can see each individual little blade. So I'm using a flat tipped brush here that's kind of frayed and I have a decent amount of paint on the brush but not so much that I lose the uh, fibers of the brush. Uh, so we wanna have paint on the brush so that we can still get each individual little fiber creating a little brush stroke on the canvas there. And then you just saw me there drag the brush to the side. And now I'm going back and going up and down, just uh, kind of hatching that in there and getting it to look like that blade of grass texture. So for the foreground here, it's the same thing as those tall grasses. This is just shorter grass. So we start with the highlights and then we add a round of shadows. And then we keep moving closer to the viewer, add more highlights. Uh, for this section, you could even just go with a whole big round of just highlights and then go back in and start to add shadows. And then to continue separating this and to get the grass and the foreground at the same level of detail as everything behind it, I do go in with my liner brush. And that is like the final touch just to make that grass in the foreground look like it's right there in front of you. sign our name and the painting is complete. Thanks for hanging out for this painting tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or you, there's a future painting tutorial you would like to see, then please leave a comment below. Uh, like I said in the beginning of this video, I haven't been the best at replying to comments recently, but I'm going to try my best. So <laughs> if you do have a question, I definitely still want to help you out. So uh, just let me know. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and happy painting. Bye bye.